Good afternoon, welcome to this proceedings of the National Assembly. It is the afternoon of the 11th day of March 2021. This afternoon, the Division of Revenue Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 7 of 2021, will be debated for the second reading. The principal object of the bill is to provide for the equitable division of revenue raised nationally among the national and county levels of government as required by Article 218 of the Constitution in order to facilitate the proper functioning of county governments and to ensure continuity of county services. Also scheduled for debate this afternoon is the National Aviation Management Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 18 of 2020. The bill aims to give effect to the recommendation of the parliamentary report dated the 17th June 2019 on the inquiry into the Kenya Airways privately initiated investment proposal to Kenya Airports Authority prepared by the Departmental Committee on Transport, Public Works and Housing, proposing among others the nationalization of Kenya Airways the bill proposes for the establishment of the Kenya Aviation Corporation as a holding corporation and its operating entities, including the operating entity subsidiary. Also scheduled for debate is the Narcotics, Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Control Amendment Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 27 of 2020. That bill is by the Departmental Committee on Administration and national security. The debate on this particular bill had already begun and uh, it was interrupted on March 9th, 2021 during the afternoon sitting. The Committee of the Old House by leave of the House will be considering various amendments, proposed amendments to the Division of Revenue Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 7 of 2021. In the Committee of the Old House, the public fundraise, fundraising appeals Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 66 of 2019, will also be debated. This bill is courtesy of the Constitutional Implementation Oversight Committee. Other bills scheduled for debate for the second reading include the Kenya National Blood Transfusion Service, Service Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 6 of 2020 by the Departmental Committee on Health, the Committee, the committee on Administration and National Security also has a bill named the County Government Amendment Bill. It is a Senate Bill number 13 of 2018. Also scheduled for debate for the second bidding, the National Cohesion and Peace Building Bill, Senate Bills number 35 of 2018. That bill is courtesy of the Committee on National Cohesion and Equal Opportunity. The Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Justin Muturi, has walked into the chambers I will now hand you over for this live broadcast, which is brought to you by the Parliamentary Broadcasting Unit, PBU, in conjunction with the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation. My name is Edward Kabasa. Enjoy your viewing. Natuombe. Ewe mwenyezi mungu ambayo kwa hekima na mwema wako umetewa nyathifa za viongozi na utawala kwa wabunge, kwa ustawi wa jamii na utawala wa haki wa ndamu. Tua kusihi kututazame kwa neema nyingi, sisi watumishu wako ambao umerithika kutuita ili tutekeleza shukuli muhimu za jamuri yetu. Tua kuomba ututeremushie baraka zako, sisi tulio kutanika hapa, na utujalie tuyatene na kuyafikiria mambo yote, Natakao vikishwa mbele yetu kwa jia haki na mwaminifu. Ili utukufu na ziba zako ziendelezwe. Na ili kustawisha amani, ufanisi na heri ya nchi yetu. Na wale ambao haja zao umezikabidhi mikononi mwetu. Amina.
Order number one, administration of oath. Nabulindo Peter Oscar. Can we get the uh, escorting party? Please, please, please make your way. Honorable Speaker, it is my greatest pleasure and honor to introduce to you the Member of Parliament elect for Matungu constituency, Honorable Nabulindo Peter Oscar. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Are you Christian, Muslim, Quaker, or atheist? <laughs> I am Christian, Christian. Mr. Speaker, sir. English. I, Nablindo. Peter Oscar, having been elected a member of the National Assembly, do swear in the name of the Almighty God that I'll bear true faith and allegiance to the people and the Republic of Kenya, that I will obey, respect, uphold, preserve, protect, and defend this constitution of the Republic of Kenya, and that I will faithfully and conscientiously discharge the duties of a member of parliament. So help me God. Congratulations, Honorable Nabulino. Thank you, sir. Next order. Order number two, communication from the chair. Honor members, you may continue to congratulate the newly elected member for Matungu, but do it, don't, don't teach him bad manners. Members, take your seat.
Honorable members, I wish to introduce to you a delegation from the Malawi Defense Forces uh, seated at the speaker's gallery. The delegation comprises of the following. One, Lieutenant General Dr. Paul Valentino Firi, Deputy Commander of the Malawi Defense Forces. Two, Major General Siphon Kalisha, Chief of, of Operations and Training. Three, Brigadier Dan Kuali, Chief of Legal Services. And four, Brigadier Luke Yetala, Yetal, Commandant Defense Staff College. The delegation is accompanied by Mr. Bernard Omondi from the Department of Defense in Kenya. The delegation is in the country on a visit to the Kenya Defense Forces specifically to share experiences on various aspects of mutual interest and defense cooperation. They are in, the, in, the, in Parliament at the invitation of some members of the Defense and Foreign Relations Committee. On my own behalf and that of the House, I wish to welcome them to the National Assembly and wish them fruitful engagements during their stay in the country. I thank you. Order number three, messages. Honorable members, as you are aware, standing order number 41, subsection 4, of the National Assembly standing order requires a speaker to report to the House any message received from the Senate. In this regard, I wish to report that I have received a message from the Senate regarding its approval of the mediated version of the Early Childhood Education Bill, Senate Bill number 26 of 2018. Honor members, the message conveys that the Senate, by a resolution made on 2nd March 2021, approved the mediated version of the bill. You also recall that this House approved the mediated version of the said bill on 4th of March 2021, thereby concluding the bicameral consideration of the bill. It therefore follows that, and pursuant to the provisions of Article 113, Clause 3 of the Constitution, I will present the bill to His Excellency the President for assent. The House is that accordingly informed. I thank you. Order number four, petitions. Honourable members, starting on number 225, subsection 2, paragraph B of this, requires the speaker to report the House any petition other than those presented by a member. Further, Article 119 of the Constitution provides for the right of any person to petition Parliament to consider any matter within its authority, including petitioning the House to enact, amend, or repeal any legislation. In this regard to our members, I wish to report the House that my office has received a petition from several residents ident identifying themselves as small-scale farmers, led by one Mr. David Caleb Otieno of Post, of Post Office Box number 2160 Nairobi, calling for, in brackets, the repudiation of the entire national debt and its diversion to social service provision, close the quote. In their petition, honorable members, the petitioners have heard that the country's total debt has reached unsustainable levels propelled by, among other reasons, recent pressure from the International Monetary Fund urging the government to include parastatus and county loans as part of the national debt. The petitioners approximate that the total debt will exceed 12 trillion shillings by June 2022 and decry the conditions and policy restrictions such as retrenchments, increased taxation, and liberalization that are normally attached to external loans and credit facilities. 
Further, honorable members, the petitioners are convinced that accumulation of debt drastically reduces public and social spending, thereby hampering the government's efforts of meeting its constitutional obligations such as health care, education, water, and sanitation, and housing. Subsequently, the petitioners seek the intervention of this House in securing the repudiation of all national debt which they describe as illegal, illegitimate, unsustainable, and odious, and call for diversion of the money thereof to one's provision of social services. Honourable members, having determined that the matters raised by the petitioners are well within the authority of this House, I order that pursuant the provision of standing under 227, subsection 1, the petition be committed to the Departmental Committee on Finance and National Planning. The committee is requesting to consider the petition and report its findings to the House and to the petitioners in accordance with standing under 227, subsection 2. I thank you, honourable members. Order number five, papers. Leader of the Majority Party. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay the following papers on the table of the House today, Thursday, 11th of March, 2021, in the afternoon sitting. Number one, the 21st biannual report of the Monetary Policy Committee for the October 2018 uh, from the Central Bank of Kenya. Number two, the 22nd biannual report of the Monetary Policy Committee for the period April 2019 from the Central Bank of Kenya. Number three, the 23rd biannual report of the Monetary Policy Committee for the period October 2019 uh, from the Central Bank of Kenya. Number four, the Monetary Policy Statement for the period 30th June 2018, June 2019, and December 2019 from the Central Bank of Kenya. And number five, the Kenya Yearbook Editorial Board on Food Security, uh, in brackets, how technology and innovation are creating efficiencies and jobs on today's farm, closing bracket, uh, in partnership with the Minister of Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries, and Irrigation. Number six, the annual report on financial statements of the Kenya Forestry uh, Research Institute for the years ended 30th of June 2014, 30th of June 2015, 30th of June 2016, 30th of June 2017, and 20, 30th of June 2018. Number seven, report from the Kenya Institute for Public Policy Research and Analysis as follows. A, informal sector's response to shock, lessons from Kenya for the year 2019. Number B, the effects of household environmental characteristics on child health in Kenya for the year 2017. Number C, Determinants of informality in the informal sector for the year 2019. Number D, the determinants of technical efficiency in secondary schools in Kenya for the year 2017. Number E, two words revitalizing Kenya's skins, hides, and leather industry for the year 2019. Number F, factors that determine choice of product market for businesses in the informal sector in Kenya for the year 2019. Number G, the effects of business environment on productivity of informal manufacturing enterprises in Kenya for the year 2019. Number H, gender productivity gap in the Kenya informal enterprises for the year 2019. Number I, technology, technology acquisition and innovations in Kenya, in Kenya's informal sector. Number J, assessment of intuitional structure uh, governing the informal sector in Kenya. Uh, number K, the status of access to agri-finance by youth and women in Kenya for the year 2019. L, women's access to agricultural finance in Kenya, baseline report 2019. And M, Kenya's economic report 2019. And lastly, number eight, the reports of the Auditor General and financial statements in respect to the following institutions for the year ended that of June 2019 and the certificates therein. One is the Assets Recovery Agency and second, Kirinyaga University. Thank you, Honorable Speaker.
Department, uh, the chairperson, uh, Departmental Committee on Health, but uh, report to be tabled by a member, Honorable Walter Owino Peters. Member Von Liwa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Martin Peters Owino. Honorable Speaker, thank you. I beg to lay uh, the following paper on the table of the House today, Thursday, March 11, 2021 afternoon sitting. A report on the Departmental Committee on Health on its consideration of the Assisted Reproductive Technology Bill, National Bill, number 34 of 2019. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It must be National Assembly Bill, eh? Is it not National Bill? National Assembly Bill, Mr. Speaker. Exactly. Thank you for the correction. Next order. Order number six. Notices of motion. Honorable Danita Gatti. You don't appear to have a card. Thank you, ve Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I beg to give notice of the following motion. That are aware that according to the World Health Organization, an estimated 15% of the world's population live with some form of disability or different ability, with 80% of them living in developing countries, further aware that in Kenya, approximately 6.5 million people live with some form of disability, out of whom nearly 3.8 million are women and girls, while approximately 85% of the total number live in abject poverty. Concerned that a majority of persons with disabilities face numerous challenges, including being denied their fundamental rights and freedoms, including the right to education and opportunities to work, virtually guaranteeing that they will live their lives in poverty, which often exacerbates their vulnerabilities and dependency on other people, assistive devices and critical medical items and requirements, deeply concerned that lack of these devices, medical items and requirements makes it impossible for persons with disabilities to live normal and dignified lives, this House urges the national government to provide assistive devices and required medical items and requirements free of charge to persons with disabilities at the constituency level through government hospitals or any other government body and to put in place mechanisms for replacement of worn out devices to enable persons with disabilities live a dignified life, be more productive, and to coexist with other members of the society. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Well, next order. Order number seven, questions and statements. Honorary questions, question number 092, member for Homer Bay Town, Honorable Peter Kaluma. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I beg to be allowed to ask uh, this question to the Cabinet Secretary falling under the charge of the committee in which I serve as member. Because uh, I've been pur pursuing this matter, but being a member of the committee, sometimes it is thought I'm abusing my office as member to pursue it. <laughs> so on this, Honorable Speaker, allow me to raise this question to the cabinet secretary in my representative role uh, as a member of, of parliament for Mobile Town constituency. Honorable, question, I Honorable Speaker, I stand to ask question number nine, 092 of 2021 to the cabinet secretary for interior and coordination of national government. One, what steps is the cabinet secretary taking to designate, to degazette the sub-counties that were created contrary to paragraph 17 of the sixth schedule to the Constitution as read together with section 48, subsection 1B of the County Governments Act. Two, what is the status of operationalization of newly created administrative and surface de delivery coordination units in Oma Bay Town constituency, namely Asego East Division, Kanyango Location, Simenya sublocation, Kanyabala Central sublocation, 
Kanyach Kachar North sub location Kabu Kubula Koguang South sub location and Kothida South sub locations established through legal notice number 5853 of 21st June 2017. Number three, what steps has the ministry taken to ensure that the administrative units specified in legal notice number 5853 of 21st June 2017 are operationalized, including substantively appointing and or posting requ requisite personnel so as to ensure efficient service delivery and provision of security in the constituencies. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Well, no, no, there's no conflict, Honorable Kaluma. So the question will still be re responded to before your committee. Uh, the next question is by the member for Nakuru Town East, the Honorable David Ikaria, who requested that the question be asked on his behalf by the Honorable Martin Peter. Is it? No, no, no. Who is it? Walter Wino, yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I arise to ask question number 093 of 2021 on behalf of uh, Honorable Daudi Gikaria, MP Nakuru Town East. The question is directed to the Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Education. Question number one. Could the Cabinet Secretary explain why the presidential directive to all secondary school heads to release KCSE certificates and seek for compensation of fees arrears from the Ministry of Education is being disregarded by many school heads? Question number two. Could the Cabinet Secretary explain the circumstances under which Moi Secondary School in Nakuru Town denied Master Stephen Muku Muta, a former student, his Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education certificate in 2018? Question number three. What steps is the ministry taking to ensure that all school heads comply with the said presidential directive and ensure that Master Stephen Muku Mutua is issued with the KCSE certificate? And question number five, what action is being taken against school principals and headmasters who continue to defy the said president's directive? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Question will be replied to before the Departmental Committee on Education and Research. A question by the member, oh, the Honorable Water Winner is your question. Yes, yeah, again, yeah. thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise again to ask question number 097, no, uh, question number 096 of 2021. The question is directed to the Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Energy. Question number one Could the Cabinet Secretary explain the plans the Ministry has put in place, if any? to connect the more than 2.4 million households across the country to electricity at a subsidized cost, as envisaged under the Achieving Universal Electricity Access Program and the expected timeline. Question number two, could the Cabinet Secretar Secretary state sources and forms of energy the Ministry intends to use and the expected total megawatts required to achieve universal electricity access, indicating how many megawatts each form will produce and how it will be connected to the national grid. Question number three, could the cabinet secretary explain how all rural-based households in Awendo <coughs> constituency and Migori County will benefit from the program and provide the number of households expected to gain from the program in the said constituency and county? And question number five, could the cabinet secretary further explain whether there's any difference between the universal electricity access program under the last mile connectivity program and state how much has been spent on last mile connectivity program considering that it has been under implementation for the last eight years across the country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, that will be replying to before the committee chaired by the gentleman on whose behalf you ask the question. That's the committee on energy. Next question by the member for Chuka Igabangombe, Honorable Patrick uh, Munene. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise towards question number 97, 2021, and I elected into the Cabinet Secretary for Defense. Question number one, can the Cabinet Secretary explain why 
Igambangombe sub-county was left out during the recent completed Kenya Defense Forces recruitment. Despite having been granted identification code number 1301 during the 2019 Kenya Population and Housing Census. Question number two, can the Cabinet Secretary state how many persons were recruited in the Kenya Defense Forces, how the recruitment slots were distributed across all the sub-counties, and the criteria used in distributing the slots in the just concluded KDF recruitment exercise in the country? Question number three, could the Cabinet Secretary state how many persons were recruited in the Kenya Defense Forces in the Rakanidhi County, and specifically from the 15 ones during the February 2021 recruitment exercise? And finally, question number four, can the, minister, cabinet secretary consider carrying out, can, the, can the ministry consider carrying out fresh recruitment of the youth in the KDF from the Igambangombe sub-county, considering that the exercise was not done? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The question will be replied to yeah. before the <laughs> Departmental Committee on um, Defense and Foreign Relations. Last question by the member for Tesla South, Honorable Geoffrey Omuse. Just press your intervention button. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I rise to ask question number 099 of 2021 to the Cabinet Secretary for Energy. One. Could the Cabinet Secretary outline the implementation status report of the last mile connectivity program in Teso South constituency? Two, could the Cabinet Secretary provide details including locations of all electrification projects undertaken by the Rural Electrification Authority in brackets area in Teso South constituency since 2014? Three, what plans does the ministry have to ensure that all stalled projects undertaken by RAYA in Teso South constituency that have since been surveyed, approved, and awaiting implementations are completed? The last one, which projects are planned by RAYA in Teso South constituency in the current financial year? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Question to be replied to before the Departmental Committee on Energy. If you, want to, if you want to rise on a point of order, please press your intervention button. Don't uh, shout. I can only see uh, an intervention by the Honorable Vento Imaga. What is your intervention? Mr. Speaker, I, 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 I don't have an issue now. I was waiting for another matter that will come later. Honorable Mwini. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in your wisdom, I would actually request you Mr. Speaker, sir, in your wisdom, I would request you to allow members to ventilate on the issue of the recruitment drive because it has elicited a lot of interest among very many members about KDF and the police recruitment. If you may allow, even if it is 10 minutes for people to ventilate, it will be appreciated, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I've shut you out because uh, you know how best to do this. If you want the members to rise, there are various uh, avenues available, either statement hour or move a motion for the House to rise to discuss the matter. Now. Merely because somebody has asked a question. You know, this is not the other house where people discuss anything at any time they wish. Yeah, we, you, know, we, you know, I mean, surely. There must be order. And we must follow our procedures. Honorable Mwenyi, as a ranking member, surely you ought to know this. Please. And you can, you can, you can actually uh, put in a request to, you know, for that matter. Because I know... As you said, there may be, and I've seen some other questions of similar nature. So do the best thing is uh, do a motion. It's a matter that can be uh, qualified to be of national importance. Yeah. 
Now, honor members, allow me also to interrupt uh, the proceedings at this point, uh, so we are on order number seven, to, to recognize two members of staff from the Parliament of Sierra Leone seated in the Speaker's Gallery. They are Mr. Ibrahim Jimisas, who is the Director of Parliamentary Budget Office, and uh, Ms. Fatmata Magaze, who is a Budget Analyst. The officers are on, on attachment in the National Assembly of Kenya to share experiences with their counterparts on the process of budget making and approval by Parliament. And on my own behalf and that of the House, I wish to welcome them to the National Assembly and wish them fruitful engagements with their counterparts in the Parliamentary Budget Office during their stay in the country. I thank you. The next segment is a statement. There is a, an indication that the chairperson of the Departmental Committee on Health was to respond to a statement requested by the member for Chuka, no, for Iyembe South, the Honorable John Paul Muirigi, uh, regarding the high number of cancer cases in Iyembe South constituency. But the member has since requested that the, the response be deferred to some future dates. And I think I saw him consult the member von Liwa. Is that correct, uh, Honorable Owino? You've agreed. Very well. So we go to the next uh, request. This is a response by the chairperson, Departmental Committee on Transport. Sorry, they are here. The request um, for statements is uh, by, oh, the first one is by the Deputy Speaker. Member for Curesoi North. Yes, I, I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Speaker, pursuant to Standing Order 442C, I wish to request for a statement from the Chairperson of the Departmental Committee on Administration and National Security regarding facilitation of village elders, also known as Wazemta, in the country. Honorable Speaker, Village elders play an integral role in functioning of the national government and even county governments at the village level by assisting chiefs and assistant chiefs in facilitating national government services, including promotion of education, handling of security issues, solving disputes, promoting development initiatives and social services in their villages through the Nyumbakumi Initiative. It is disheartening that these elders discharge these important duties without any facilitation by government or even acknowledging the need to appreciate and motivate these elders for their services, for the services rendered. Honorable Speaker, despite great sacrifices by the village elders make while providing these services, majority of them are suffering since they do not have alternative source of income. It is against this background that I seek a statement from the chairperson, Departmental Committee on Administration of Nation and National Security on the following. One, could the chairperson provide details of the number of village elders engaged per constituency in the country? Two, could the chairperson provide details on the terms of service and the remuneration policy for village elders in Kenya? And three, what measures the ministry has put in place to ensure that village elders are adequately facilitated while undertaking these normal duties? I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chairperson, it's an indication that the chairperson is not present by the vice chair I was busy, uh, so doesn't, she has not even had anything, I'm sure. Can you, can you, can you respond? Yes, Mr. Speaker, I've had um, within you, two weeks. You've had? <laughs> Yes, yes. And we've, earlier on, we even discussed with the deputy speaker, so I'm in the picture. So yeah. you, oh, you are yes. good to be in the picture, <laughs> as well as in the photograph. <laughs> Very well. 
Deputy Speaker, it will, it will be responded to in two weeks. The next request is by the member for Awendo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is a request for statement regarding mandatory requirement for procurement of security services by public and private institutions in the country. Honorable Speaker, pursuant to standing order 44 in bracket 2C, I seek to request a statement from the Chairperson Departmental Committee on Administration and National Security regarding mandatory requirement for procurement of security services by public and private institutions in the country. Honorable Speaker, firms seeking to undertake procurement of security services for various institutions in public and private sector in the country are faced with a myriad of challenges, among them specific requirements which should be obtained from an accredited institution authorized by Kenya Private Security Regulatory Authority. In absence of a prescription on the accredited institutions, the various certificates required to be obtained or authenticated by the said institutions are not available. Honorable Speaker, the House nullified the proposed private security regulation, regulations on 19th November 2019, thereby rendering the operationalization oper oper of the act in <laughs> incomplete. Uh, this therefore implies that there are no requirements for procurement of security services based on any regulations. Honorable Speaker, it is in this background that I seek a statement from the Chairperson, Departmental Committee on Administration and National Security on the following. One, could the Chairperson provide a list of security sector accredited institutions that are required to issue the requisite procurement certifications with the details of their approved training curriculum? Question two, could the chairperson further state the number of security training certificates so far issued to security, uh, to security firms in the country and the duration it takes for one to be issued with uh, certifications from the date of application? Question number three, could the chairperson clarify what has been guiding, uh, the guiding framework for issuance of certificates in absence of the regulations? Question number five, what measures has the ministry put in place to ensure that private security firms that have not been able to acquire the said certifications for their directors and their employees due to inordinate delays occasioned by the Kenya Private Security Regulatory Authority are not disenfranchised in terms of participation in public tenders that require the said certificates. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Vice Chair, again. Mr. Speaker, we need two weeks two to weeks. respond here. Yeah. Thanks. I think as, even as you respond, I think it's important to bear in mind the point that was raised by the member in the request, that uh, this House, in its wisdom, annulled the proposed regulations. That did not in itself mean that the regulating, uh, regulation making authority under the Act could not come up with others. And the House has encouraged all government agencies to, to, when they were to propose regulations and first of all share with the, with the committee so that to, us to avoid them falling into pitfalls. Many of them don't appear to have uh, you know, legally qualified people to even draft letters. So they find, when they are, making, they are coming up with regulations that uh, cannot even uh, be passed by people in the Kikomba market. So I think it's, it's important that the regulation making body also is requesting to try and come up with the fresh regulations. Because I know they will know they, 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 they need to implement the act. And the regulations are the, the, the avenue through which the act would be you know, properly implemented or operationalized. The next is the response by the chairperson transport public works and housing to various requests. Honorable Kosing. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. And Honorable Speaker, I want to respond on three statements. And from the one set, Honorable Speaker, I want to say that was responded yesterday. But let me just summarize for the purpose of the House, before the Honorable Members and the Minister. Honorable Speaker, first statement was from Honorable Oudo Funyola, Funyola 1. He brought a statement, Honorable Speaker, on border point and the road. 
That statement was responded, uh, Honorable Speaker, satisfactorily. What happened was we intervened as a committee because Honorable Wood wanted a road, but he wanted, first of all, that a border point to be gazetted. When we saw that that is not within the precinct of the, of the committee because that is administration, we had to address it to the people of Unula to get a road which the Minister of the Speaker took commitment. And it was very good on the speaker. Number two, a, a statement was from a ranking member of the House Honorable Speaker, Honorable Dwale, about some roads in Northeastern. The Minister responded yesterday, Honorable Dwale has a statement, and he is satisfied on the speaker. Finally, Honorable uh, Muroni MP, uh, Honorable Koyo, had also a statement, Honorable Speaker, which I want, by extension, to seek your, your direction. Because, Honorable Speaker, the question came, and it was about demolition by Kenya Railway. It was going, or it went, Honorable Speaker, the question went to administration, and according to what I got, Honorable Speaker, is that the office of the clerk referred to, the, to my committee. So when Honorable Koyo appeared, and I want him to speak, Honorable Speaker, when he appeared before my committee, he was of the opinion, Honorable Speaker, that, supported by Honorable Alago Lodge, that you made a ruling, Honorable Speaker, that that statement should be responded by three ministers. One, Minister for Transport, another one, uh, uh, national, uh, sec uh, national Security, another one, Lands. So when he appeared before my committee, Honorable Speaker, he requested by committee not to, pro to prosecute the matter because you had made a ruling, a ruling which, Honorable Speaker, I didn't have officially from the office of the clerk to my committee. So what happened, Honorable Speaker? We pended that statement. I asked the office of the clerk, Honorable Speaker, to furnish the committee with your ruling so that I'm guided properly, Honorable Speaker. Otherwise, the two questions were responded, I mean, statements were responded, Honorable Speaker, perfectly. I'm waiting for one, your direction on the Kenya Railway, whether you require the three ministries to appear. And if they are appearing, Honorable Speaker, which committee are they appearing? Is it the leader of majority, or is it me, uh, me transport, or, 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 or administration? But, Honorable Speaker, as you rule in this house, that members must be satisfied, the people who raise questions and statements. I felt that I agreed with the Honorable uh, Koyo that we get further ruling from you so that the, the Honorable Member and his people are satisfied. Otherwise, those responses of the Honorable Speaker are done properly according to the proceedings of the House. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Well, I think, uh, as you right, just said, the, the clerk will furnish you with uh, the earlier ruling so that you can then uh, raise the, whatever other issues. Uh, of course, as you know, it's only 16 minutes uh, past uh, 3. The member of Muhoroni normally comes at about 4.35. <laughs> so it's, he, <laughs> he, he still, it must be still uh, either in Muhoroni or somewhere uh, on, the, on the road coming. Um, I know the, the Honorable James Koyo usually will not be here this early. Honorable Udo, it has been said that uh, you are satisfied. You managed to get a road to, <laughs> for your constituents. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Yes, I appeared before the committee and with the members of the executive. We had a discussion. They made some undertakings. I just hope and pray they live to their word, and I hope it was not just uh, empty promises. But I, get, I got an assurance from the chief of the committee that you will assist in following up in resolving the matter at hand. On the issue of the gazettement, of the border point, we are aptly directed where to, to seek a clarification, and that we will seek shortly in the course of some weeks to come. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Only to observe that uh, where, where uh, executives uh, or functionaries from the executive make undertakings before committees, in order for those committees, uh, for those undertakings to be followed up, by our implementation committee, there is need for a report to be, to be made to, be, to the House so that it is adopted by the House and becomes a resolution of the House capable of enforcement. That's the, that's the best route. Uh, Honorable Duale. The Speaker, without uh, having no hope or prayer, the answer I was given is very satisfactory and uh, I am very, very happy with the Minister Machari and his team and the chair. And uh, I hope, uh, Mr. Speaker, going forward, you'll ask some of the chairs. And, uh, and I also want to thank the clerk's office 
because they've sent me the, 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 the answer in advance. I read it and I spoke to the chair and said I have no business appearing before the minister because this answer is so, in a situation where uh, if we get the answer early, sometimes parliament can give us a written answer. And if you are satisfied, then that's good. But I want to thank the committee and the ministry. Very well. Member for Moyale, I see you, are, you, are, you have pressed your intervention button. What are you? Mr. Speaker, sir, I did ask uh, for a statement uh, on 11th of last month. And I remember even on Tuesday I rest. It's exactly now one month. And you remember, Mr. Speaker, the urgency that, uh, that issue had. And the information I'm getting at the moment is that there's a reply and the chairman is not even satisfied with that uh, answer. And I've not gotten any answer to date, Mr. Speaker. What? Why not? Is it uh, Honorable Fatuma Gedi? Yes. Maybe you can respond to him. Yes. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. We have the response from the ministry ready, but as a committee, uh, we needed uh, more information. We thought uh, the answers that we have is not sufficient enough to bring to the House, so we've asked the ministry to provide with us more detailed uh, response. But in the meantime, uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I said um, we have the statement ready with us, but as a committee, we thought uh, there's more information that we needed and they were not providing. So we've asked the ministry to give us more detailed uh, response. But in, in the meantime, I've discussed with Honorable Kalicha, there is some administrative um, issues that we commit as a committee to help the situation as we wait for the, for the response. And anyway, thank you. Is it possible we can also encourage some similar way of doing things like the Honorable Kosing does his? Some of these things which could, be, which could be complex in nature. It is best that uh, the cabinet secretaries themselves appear in person and then you invite the member who is uh, seeking the statement so that if there are issues that need to be, because you know, we don't want this thing of uh, the member saying this and you are saying you are going to find, then you come and what you will find, you come and say the member says this even once, then you go and find, if I not, not satisfactory, it will be ping pong. Is it possible that uh, you, Honorable Fatuma, you could, you could consider if that matter is as in, you know, it appears to be complex, that you can invite the cabinet secretary or whoever it is that is responsible for the issues to appear before your committee, respond directly, and the Honorable Gufu is also present to raise any supplementary questions that he may wish to raise. I think it may be an easier way so that you don't, you don't carry all the burden yourself. Agreed, uh, Mr. Speaker. We'll yes, be so guided you, by that. So you can even schedule your uh, uh, meeting even for next week so that uh, the Honorable uh, uh, Gufu can also appear. Okay. Yeah, Honorable Gufu, you will be, if you are invited, also be available. Yeah, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, I think uh, what I'm seeing is lack of uh, some seriousness. Uh, as I'm asking as you, are you going to be available now? And, you know, it's no point now saying you're seeing some. Where are you seeing that uh, lack of seriousness? Yeah, I'm, I'm, saying suggest, this. I'm suggesting the, an easier way so that you stop seeing things. I'll be available anytime, Mr. Speaker. Anytime they are ready, I'll be available. But what I'm saying is that, Mr. Speaker, says the schools are closed. And even the idea of even giving me that uh, reply from the cabinet secretary is not there. You have, so not, got, you have, not, you have not gotten the, that unsatisfactory reply. So you're going to be given that one. Yeah, it, it, it well, could no, have been better give, if... Give him, give him that one which you thought is unsatisfactory. Perhaps it will be, you, you'll be satisfied. Maybe you, the, as a committee, you may, be, you may have thought it was unsatisfactory. Maybe he wants to have that one. Give him. You have I, it. I give him now because you, uh, you have it. 
I have it, but as a committee, Mr. Speaker, I said uh, we told no. the ministry. But, but you see, he says. But I have it here, if he, he, he wants. But it's he says, uh, no, actually, those statements should be given through the clerk's office, as Honorable Dwelly just said earlier on. Yeah. So that the member who has raised the issue is able to read through if there are any issues uh, that uh, he wishes to raise or she wishes to raise, then uh, they raise. But if you keep it to yourself, and he doesn't have it, so he has a right to complain. But this Ministry of Interior, what is, what, is, what is wrong with it? Mr. Speaker, I will give him the copy, but I discussed with him before I came to the chamber. But you see, he's saying he hasn't been yeah, given. I discussed with him, I even offered um, the issues of administratively, we, we finished that one. Just as we give, wait just, for the, just give him the statement. But I'll give him the copy. Give him the copy of the okay. statement, then they can raise the other issues. Okay, thank yeah. you. Mm. Honorable Wario, you get, you'll get the statement. Yes. Mr. Speaker, sir, I, I'll get the statement and uh, the reply, but I still uh, uh, I'll be happy, as you, have, as you have earlier suggested. If the Cabinet uh, Secretary will appear and I raise my issues as uh, uh, required. Thank but you. you. See, but, but you see, you have, not been, you have not seen the statement. Just see it so that uh, you will see whether you are satisfied. I see other interventions. Honorable Mboya, Nyatike. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, my question of last year uh, on... Uh, Questions of last year I, died, died with the session. Uh, I just want you to pick what I, the concern I have, because uh, it no, was... No, but you, if you start by saying a question of last year... <laughs> it was cleverly killed, uh, Honorable Speaker. No, not cleverly. <laughs> unless, unless you have not read the standing orders yourself. You, you, know, you know why I'm saying it was The clever? standing orders are very clever. Okay, Honorable <laughs> or Speaker. cleverly done. <laughs> I was invited twice, and uh, for the two occasions, <laughs> nobody represented the ministry. Uh, nobody represented the ministry twice. Are you discussing about a question of last year? Uh, I just wanted to register my dissatisfaction. No, don't, don't register. Uh, we, there is no place to register about last year. A question. <laughs> okay, I'll raise it again, Honorable Speaker. Thank just you. go and revive it. That's what we agreed. Honorable Boya, just revive it so that you, now you, you give it a uh, feet on which to stand. I will, Honorable Speaker, but uh, the committee should see, show some commitment. It's very frustrating to appear before the committee twice without the ministry representation. Thank you. <laughs> I think, I don't know members, I think also we must, also, we must be always alive to the very immense powers that you have. That if you, if you appear and somebody who has been uh, invited to appear before a committee doesn't appear, you can come and raise the matter here. And this house, you can even move an appropriate motion for the house to deal with uh, whoever it is. But you know now, you people keep complaining and you, you are the people who are... You are the people, you have, you have all the power to deal with uh, these people. But you know, when, when you, you come, you want to go to them, you go and they have tea there, then you come here to say, oh, they didn't appear. You know, don't, you have the power to, if they don't appear, and we want to deal with it, just on our members. If people are not appearing before committees when they have been invited to appear without giving reasons, satisfactory reasons, Please, members, raise those issues here. But not, don't raise by way of complaint. Do the usual thing, that is, uh, which will move the house. Because those, there will be particulars. That the, member, the, the person was invited to come on a particular day, the person failed to appear, he was without giving any reasons. And you, the house will deal with the, with the, with the person. Please, don't, don't, don't so that, don't complain, don't have a complaint. What is your intervention about? M Mr. Speaker, I, 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 am <laughs> I sympathize with um, my colleague, Honorable Kalicha here. It seems, Mr. Speaker, that the- Have you, have you, have you raised a point of honor to sympathize? <laughs> to express sympathy? 
know, we, speaker, we don't have a motion. We don't have a motion on sympathy. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, it's a, it's a frustration that we are facing, and I, I, I've heard what you've said, Mr. Speaker. That it, it, looks, it looks, Mr. Speaker, that um, the Cabinet Secretary for Interior has become very notorious in terms of ignoring members of this parliament. And uh, Mr. Speaker, that time is coming that we shall exercise our power as this House. But it looks like even the committee itself has gone to bed with, with the cabinet secretary, the kind of answers we get from this committee, Mr. Speaker, looks like the, 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 the committee uh, is, is, is in itself even compromised by that ministry. Because, Mr. Speaker, you even remember the issues I've been raising. We, we're now going on research for the next 10 days until April is when that minister want, wants to appear before the committee as they continue doing very bad things to the people. I think this, some, some members here have, have, have uh, lied to the cabinet secretary that is, is some, some sort of a presidential material. I do not know he wants to be president of which country. Because it is, it is unfortunate what that cabinet secretary is doing. He, he's treating this house with a lot of contempt. And it, he must be called out. That time is coming very soon. You see, that's why I told you, please, don't, don't just complain. You, you know, you know how, how, how do I would... I cannot respond on a book I'm getting. And of course, also, if a committee is not, is not um, working, again, one of the members, you have uh, what it takes to deal with the committee as well. Honorable Limo. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, I want to add to the, the issues which have been raised, Mr. Speaker, about the cabinet secretaries uh, taking this house seriously, Mr. Speaker. I want to repeat what the, 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 the other uh, just uh, honorable member who has just spoken has said, Mr. Speaker. You know, Mr. Speaker, it is now time that we remind this house again that this house has all the power equivalent to that of the judiciary, Mr. Speaker, to take action on those, on those cabinet secretaries who do not take this house seriously. We have had a situation, Mr. Speaker, where some members are even made to believe that we are actually playing a second fiddle to the executive, Mr. Speaker. This is an independent house, and it has, it has, we have a clear roles we are playing in this house. One of the roles, Mr. Speaker, is actually to, 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 to check on the excesses of the executive, Mr. Speaker, and most of the cabinet secretaries now even do not take uh, the, 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 other than the committee, uh, attending the committee, Mr. Speaker, you find some members going to the, uh, the, to the offices of those officers and they are taken for a ride, Mr. Speaker. They are just left there because they are not taking this house seriously. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to urge that this house, we must rise. Mr. Speaker, we have even seen letters being sent to this house, Mr. Speaker, to the extent that the cabinet secretaries can break the law, Mr. Speaker, and say... For instance, that the, once money has not been released by the same secret, uh, cabinet secretaries to, to, to funds which are influenced by, the, by, the, by law, like CDF, Mr. Speaker, they have guts to write to us that that money, that money will not be provided. And we are forgetting that this is a budget-making house, Mr. Speaker. We have the right to put any amount of money we need, and we have to rise to the occasion, Mr. Speaker, and ensure that... If there is no provision for CDF as provided by the law, we must ensure we protect the people of our constituencies, Mr. Speaker. We cannot play with the people of our constituencies. You remember, Mr. Speaker, as we are even before, without anticipating debate, Mr. Speaker, as we debate the Division of Revenue Bill, Mr. Speaker, we must take into account the fact that the most successful devolved fund, Mr. Speaker, is CDF. And we must rise to the occasion and defend that in this house. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to end by this, saying this. As we, and as, as we wait to debate, to debate supplementary budget, Mr. Speaker, we want to send a message to the budget committee. If you bring, uh, if you bring supplementary without full provision of CDF to this house, Mr. Speaker, count it as done as dead on arrival, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, Honorable Limo, you have taken advantage of um, the provision of um, standing order. 
to debate uh, to, to debate something which is not uh, on the floor. Now I hope the member for Nyali will not also do the same with this intervention. Please, if you if you if you if you don't don't engage in a debate. Uh, shukran sana, Mweshimua Speaker. Uh, Nigeta kusema bunge hili ni bunge la heshima. Ni mahala ambapo sheria inaundwa sheria ya taifa. Na ukiona wabunge wanazungumza kwa hamasa na hasira ni kwa sababu hili bunge limeanza kudharauliwa na baadhi ya mawaziri katika serikali. Nimesikia wabunge wakizungumza na kusema ya kwamba kila mara wanapoleta masuala yao mbele ya wizara wao huwasikizi ni kwa sababu tunadharauliwa. Wizara mbili zinazo matatizo sana ni wizara ya usalama wa ndani na wizara ya uchukuzi. Jana nimemmsikia waziri wa usalama wa ndani bwana Fred Matiangi akisema ya kwamba mahakama ni sharti ifanye vile ambavyo wanataka. Huyu Matiangi yeye binafsi amekataa kuheshimu sheria za hii nchi. But you, know, you, cannot, you cannot discuss you cannot discuss uh, Mheshimiwa speaker you must move a, mo a substantive motion please. Mheshimiwa speaker. No 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 you know honorable Muhammad Ali you we, those are, it's against the standing orders of the house. If you have anything against any state officer, please bring bring a substantive motion here. Now, because the, the, the officer has no opportunity to defend himself here. Now, if you tell me that you had him speaking in some village somewhere, now how do I get to know what is happening in all the villages in Kenya? Honorable, honorable Mom and Ali, please, please, just if, if, unless there's something specific you want to, you want to raise, just, you finish, but be specific. Shimo Speaker, kaulimbiu ya mimi kuzungumza ni kusema ya kwamba bunge hili, bunge la kuminambili, limedharauliwa sana, kiasi cha kwamba hata sheria zikiundwa ndani ya bunge hili, hazifuatiliwi wala hazitekelezwi. Mheshimiwa speaker tunaloliuliza ni kwamba iwapo mbunge yote ataweza kuuliza maswali yake kuhusiana na eneo lake ama swala lolote linalohusu nchi hii ni sharti hawa mawaziri waheshimu jumba hili. Shukrani sana mheshimiwa speaker. You are absolutely right. But and that when that doesn't happen as I advised earlier honorable Ali when that doesn't happen the House has recourse. It has power and authority given by the Constitution and in the standing orders. So please, when that happens, please just feel free to bring uh, those uh, appropriate motions. Little majority. Uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, pursuant to the provisions of standing order number 44, uh, two. Uh, subsection 2A, I rise to give the following statement on behalf of the House Business Committee, which met on Tuesday 9th of March 2021 to prioritize business for consideration. When our speaker, as members are aware, the House is scheduled to proceed on a short recess commencing tomorrow in accordance with the resolution of the House on Tuesday the 9th of March 2021, amending the 2021 calendar. In this regard, the House Business Committee has not scheduled any business for next week. However, upon resumption from recess on Tuesday the 23rd of April of March 2021, the following business will be prioritized at both the afternoon and evening sittings. Number one will be the Committee of the Whole House on the following bills, the referendum uh, number two bill, National Assembly Bill number 14 of 2020, the National Aviation uh, Management Bill, National Assembly Bill number 18 of 2020. Uh, number two, the second reading of the following bills, if we do not conclude uh, with them today. Number one, the Kenya National Blood Transfusion Service Bill of 2020. Number two, the, count, the County Government's Amendment Bill, Senate Bill number 13 of 2018. Number three, the National Cohesion and Peace Building Bill, Senate Bill number 35 of 2018. The Narcotics, Drugs, and Psychotropic uh, Substances Control Amendment Bill of 2020. The Constitution of Kenya Amendment Bill 
number three bill of 2019, the county statutory instruments bill, Senate bill number 21 of 2018, the impeachment procedure bill, Senate bill number 15 of 2018, and lastly, the county law compliance and enforcement bill, Senate bill number 25 of 2018. We'd also look at number three, will be the second reading of the business laws amendment, uh, number two bill of 2020, and consideration of the Budget and Appropriations Committee on the first supplementary estimates for the financial year 2020-2021. Then five, the consideration of the following reports uh, should we not conclude with them today. And one would be the report on the, of the Committee on Parliamentary Broadcasting and Library on the form, formulation, of, uh, formulation of parliamentary broadcasting channels. And two, report of the Committee on Implementation on the Implementation Status of Petition Regarding Working Conditions at Kuala International Sugar Company Limited. We shall also prioritize consideration of the Constitution of Kenya, Amendment Bill number 2020, popularly known as the BBI Bill, within the course of that week. We anticipate the report of the Joint Committee on the Bill being tabled on March uh, 23, 2021. Uh, thereafter, the Bill shall be considered a second reading, Committee of the Whole House, and third reading. Honorable Speaker, in accordance with the provisions of Study Honorable 42A, 5, and 6, I wish to convey that the following cabinet secretaries are scheduled to appear before the departmental committees as follows. And I hope the affected members are paying attention. The cabinet secretary for energy will appear before the departmental committee of, on energy on Tuesday, 16th of March, 2021, to answer questions, question number 27 20 of 2021 from the Honorable Getonga Murugara uh, on the status of electrification of public schools in Taraka Nevi, in the Taraka constituency. Number two, the Cabinet Sector for Industrialization, Trade and Enterprise Development will appear before the Departmental Committee on Trade, Industry and Cooperatives on Thursday, 18th of March 2021, to answer the question by the Honorable Kimani Ishungwa MP. The Cabinet Secretary for Environment will appear before the Departmental Committee on Environment and Natural Resources on Tuesday, 16th March 2021 to answer question number one of 2021 by the Honorable Godfrey Osotzi uh, on the degazettement of the Shiro and uh, Shaviringa settlement schemes in Kakamega Forest. Number four, the Cabinet Secretary for Defense will appear before the Departmental Committee on Defense and Foreign Relations on Tuesday, 23rd of March, 2021, to answer uh, the one, the question 029 of 2021 by Honorable Joshua Kimilu uh, on the death of Major Rafael Chalo uh, Biduka, uh, and two, question 058 uh, of 2021 by the Honorable Omar Mwini on the recruitment of officers of KDF. Number five, the Cabinet Secretary for Labor and Social Security will appear before the Departmental Committee on Labor and Social Service on Wednesday, the 24th of March, to answer question number nine of 2021 by the Honorable Socion on check of deductions and remittance to trade unions. Uh, number two, the question 65 of 2021 by the Honorable Jan Janet CTNA on non payment of Inua Jami dues to Ms. Dorcas Njeri Mwangi. And number three, Question 81 of 2021 by the Honorable Gadoni Wamushomba uh, on the criteria for identification of beneficiaries generally and Kiambu County in particular. Number six, the Cabinet Secretary for Tourism and Wildlife will appear before the Departmental Committee on Sports, Tourism and Culture on Wednesday, the 24th of March, to answer question number 34 of 2021 by the Honorable John Muneno Wambugu uh, on why. Mr. Victor Nyaga Gadivi was denied admission to the Kenya Utali College. And lastly, Honorable Speaker, the House Business Committee will convene on Tuesday, March the 23rd of 2021 at 11 a.m. to schedule business for the coming week. I now wish to uh, lay this uh, statement on the table of the House. Can I have a pen? We had. Um, left out the request for um, a statement by the member for Githunguri, Honorable Gabriel Kago. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, pursuant to studying order 442C, I wish to request for a statement from the chairperson of the Departmental Committee on Agriculture, Livestock, and Cooperatives regarding the outbreak of foot and mouth disease in, in the country, particularly the Gidoguri constituency. Honorable Speaker, as I stated in my statement request made on 2nd July 2020, the disease which was first reported in September 2019 has claimed thousands of livestock and to date it is, yes, it is yet to be contained. Regulatably, Honorable Speaker, even with the undertaking by the Cabinet Secretary, not much has been done to eliminate or suppress the disease. As a result, Honorable Speaker, there is yet another outbreak of the disease in the country, and in particular, dairy farmers in Gedogori constituency have suffered huge losses as a result of death of their livestock. This has greatly affected the livelihood of thousands of farmers who rely on dairy farming as their main source of livelihood. Honorable Speaker, the outbreak has been confirmed amid revelations of acute shortage of vaccines against this contagious disease. In this regard, steps to contain this disease have been frustrated by the Kenya Veterinary Vaccines Production Institute, KVVAPI, the institution mandated to coordinate and take charge of all veterinary medicine production in the country for 80 lakhs vaccines, too bureaucratic, and the quality of vaccines is questionable. Honorable Speaker, in the period 2019-2020, vaccines worth Kenya shillings 5 million expired and therefore rendered unfit for use due to bureaucracy at the institute. MOAS is, is that the regulator, Kevevapi, and Kenya Veterinary Services appear not to be working to ensure the disease are, are contained. This has led to the compromise on the quality of vaccines. Honorable Speaker, it is against this background that I seek for a statement from the chairperson of the Departmental Committee on Agriculture, Livestock, and Cooperatives. In the statement, the chairperson should address the following. One, what policy measures have been put in place to urgently contain the outbreak of foot and mouth disease in the country, and particularly Gidoguri constituency. Two, what urgent steps are in place to ensure that Kevvapi delivers on its mandate and ensures that there is continued production and availability of quality foot and mouth disease vaccines countrywide? And lastly, Honorable Speaker, what policy measures have been instituted to address the law of the regulator with regard to vaccine production. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. The Chairperson, Agriculture Committee. The, the Chairperson is Honorable Tiren. Is he, is, he, is he still a member of Parliament? Honorable uh, uh, Kanyuidia, you want, you, want, you, want, you want to respond? But, uh, Chair, uh, let me take this opportunity to thank you for the opportunity to, to contribute to this. Uh, what statement. do you mean to contribute? Uh, Chair, I would like to say that the. No, 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 no. You know, please, honorable members, Chair, it, if, we, if we continue behaving this way, we will no longer be the. the uh, House of Parliament, where we don't follow our own standing orders. 
a request for a statement is not an opportunity for debate. I'm sure you have, maybe you have been watching some other place where, the, where this happens, but certainly not here. Not here, not here. No, what message? You have a message from the chairman? Yes, he left me a message. Okay. House. Yes. Chair, the chairman has had an, an emergency. His mother has had an accident. So he has rushed to Eldoret. He, he is trying to catch up the afternoon flight. So he requested that the house gives him leave. He will, we will respond to this issue in two weeks. Yes, Honorable Kago, you, you, I can see you are almost instantaneously agitated. Yes, uh, Honorable Speaker, because this is a matter of uh, uh, urgency. It should be treated with, uh, with emergency because Honorable Speaker, the, the house is going animals to are the house dying is going to, the, the house is going to recess. The house is going to recess later this evening. So, so, so you are suggesting that uh, it should, uh, this should happen before 9 p.m.? Uh, at least a uh, maximum of five days, uh, Honorable Speaker. Five days will be, will it, will it be Monday next week? Because animals are dying, Honorable Speaker. Yeah, even human beings are dying, eh? <laughs> at least, uh, Honorable Speaker, human beings, they are having the vaccine. Animals do not have vaccine, Honorable Speaker. <laughs> Honorable Kago. <laughs> Now, what, what do we do? Because the house will not be sitting uh, within those five days. No, but is it that the Honorable Kago would want to get uh, the response uh, to just uh, in his private capacity? Honorable Kago, what's your response? Uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, since this is a matter of uh, urgency, I, I then uh, request uh, you rule that uh, we have the statement response in seven days then. As soon as the House next seats, you, you are safer that way. But not, uh, uh, not, 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 not tonight, uh, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. I, I don't want uh, to agree to that, uh, Honorable Speaker, because I know okay. the magnitude can we of... Say, can uh, we say, you, 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 because the House will not be sitting um, tomorrow, it will not be sitting the whole of next week until 23rd. That is the motion which you passed. Uh, Chair, I agree. You, you can see, if, but you know, it is not, it is not that... Uh, we, we sympathize with, the, with what you are saying, Honorable Kago. But the House is rising today on uh, proceed on a short recess up to Tuesday 23rd of uh, this month. That's why I was said, suggesting if the, the response be given on the day the House next sits. Yeah? Honorable Mutunga. No, the, on, on, you see, Honorable Amunyen, you cannot now be able Let's, let's just clear this one so that. Uh, no, but you cannot, uh, we can't have. Uh, no, help who now? You know, I don't require any help at this time myself. Chair. Honorable? Honorable, when you say you saw. Chair. Honorable Speaker. On our speaker, the, I, I, we, I, I, we, the chairman will get in touch with the relevant ministry to find out what can be done. Because you know, foot and mouth disease is one of the notifiable diseases. Being notifiable means that it's very dangerous and it spreads very fast. So the ministry must do something about this. Although it all boils back to the support to the, to the ministry and especially support to Kevavapi. So we shall have a statement on what can be done urgently because we need disease-free uh, environment where we can keep our animals. Honorable Mutunga, could I, could I, can we suggest uh, to you that um, you actually get a copy of this uh, request for statement and deliver it to the ministry? Yes, if, sir. If, okay. Even as we await the, norm, the other normal parliamentary processes. Yes, yeah, this is honorable speaker. Because you, are, you appear to appreciate the, 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 the I, dangers I, posed I, by the spread I, I of I do this, understand uh, the situation, honorable speaker, and it's not yes. only foot and mouth disease, even uh, lumpy skin disease is, is also, there's also an outbreak, yes. and uh, there's another one called uh, contagious caprine pneumonia. So we have a serious problem in this country. Absolutely.
Honorable Bukose, what's uh, your intervention? Uh, uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. With, without anticipating what he is, is he, the Mutungan team will be able to say, Honorable Speaker, two days ago I confronted the chairman here because the issue of uh, foot and mouth, the country has not had vaccine for the last one year. I don't know whether they have a new information on whether we, we, there is any availability of the vaccine because I think that's the direction that we are see all seeking and that's what the farmers want because it is a serious thing and uh, many of the farmers actually are approaching us as their representative asking us what is it that is going to be done because when Mutunga tells us you are going to give a statement in two weeks this problem has been there for the last one year so what is it that uh, the interventions that are already in place that's what we are interested in not giving us a statement in two weeks that does not have any bearing so when, so when, when would you, you you wanted to come on sunday <laughs> no, no I, I we we just because this is a problem they have had for the last uh, close to one year and you can see them two years and you can see the member is agreeing with me what we want is what is the what has the government done or is there any new development because we confronted the chairman here and the chairman was telling us as per now there is no vaccine so but very well, very when, well. when mutunga gives that he is going to give an, a response in two in two weeks time is there anything new development because as far as we know there is no vaccine no 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 honorable mm. because you are yes. wrong he is not you have said the government has told you but the government is not here the honorable mutunga is not the government in fact he cannot even speak on behalf of it so, if uh, you have been told by the chairman, then let the, the chairman come and confirm that. Because uh, the government is not here. Now, don't raise your hand up. If you, you do know the way we, we work here. It's not by raising hands up. This is, honor members, let's not go to that, um, that method we see in county assemblies where people just speak because it's fashionable to open mouths and say something. So don't just open, throw, throw up your hands. These interventions, are they, are they on anything? On foot and mouth? <laughs> now, whose foot? Honorable Vatuma Gedi. Mr. Speaker, I want to report uh, progress and invite the member, Honorable Kalicha and Honorable Kamket, on Tuesday. And the CS will come to the committee. They have Since left. they're in the house. They have left. <laughs> At least the member of Otieti, because he is, uh, is of some interesting uh, height, I yes. noticed him as he walked out. And so any other the member? The Honorable Wario Gufu Kalicha. You've heard that now. Tuesday, yeah. Tuesday, and what time? 10, 10, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. We will get an invitation from the club. Tell the member of Otieti to also appear and if he fails to forever shut his mouth about those issues, about the uh, rustling and uh, you know, and the uh, roadblocks and the, the rest, you know, it's too much. Honorable Rachel Nyamai, you said about foot and the mouth. Yes, uh, Honorable Speaker, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, where I come from, the community members are not able to tell whether what the animals are suffering from is foot and mouth or another bacteria or viral infection. But what has been reported to our offices is that uh, animals have uh, symptoms that have not been uh, very common within uh, the area of Okambani where I come from. There are blisters in the mouth and also in the foot. So I would like to say, in the, uh, so I would like to say that this is a matter of importance that needs to be taken seriously. Bearing in mind that uh, these animals are sharing water points with animals and also with wildlife. And this is a matter that is likely to spread uh, beyond domestic also to wild animals. So I would like to say to the chair that uh, let this matter be taken seriously. There before we used to have vaccination being coordinated by national government. So it is important that they also support, uh, especially concerning the foot and mouth issue that they support county governments. There is a problem, honorable speaker. Thank you. By the way, is there a vice chair of that committee? Does that committee have a vice chair? You know, some of these, uh, some of these uh, chairs and the vice chairs, 
They have already taken leave. They've gone on recess. Who is the vice chair of that committee? He certainly is not Mr. Wanyonyi, no, not him. Who, who is the vice chair of that committee? Who? Oh, Catherine Waruguru. Is she aware that she is the vice chair? I mean, surely. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, very, it's very surprising. But on, on, honestly, on the members, you know, it, we have, we, we, now, from me, I'm able to tell which chair comes to the house. Even those who sit at the back, where it is not very easy to be noticed. Like now, my friend, my good friend, the Honorable P. Wandai, the chair of public accounts, has resorted to sitting right at the back. I don't know why. <laughs> I can see you, I can see you. But uh, honestly, honorable, honorable members, even if we discuss this matter, and we're discussing with, uh, it's it just, to discuss that which you cannot, there, there's, no resp there's no answer. You just want to talk because it is fashionable to talk. You're becoming honorable members. Without moving a motion, you should have brought a motion to to adjourn the house to so as you can discuss uh, whatever those things you discuss without uh, any resolutions. So I mean, this house cannot cannot that's operating in vain, honourable members. Unless honourable Mutunga wants to, if you if you have if you have a new information, honourable Mutunga. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Honourable Speaker, we are sure that something is happening. What we will need to do is to find out exactly what is happening at the ministry and ex at the Kevavapi itself. <laughs> not that I have any different information, but notifiable diseases, Honourable Speaker, cannot be watched as they ravage our animals. I know something is happening. So we will get the correct report in the shortest time possible and disagree the members. You see, Honourable Mutunga, even if something is happening, because we don't know what is happening. Uh, given what the Honorable Okago has said and what uh, Rachel, Honorable Rachel Nyamai has said, I think you can see the, import, the, the urgency in this matter. But now, without the chair of the committee there, the vice chair, now all we know from you, Honorable Mutunga, is that something is happening. We don't know whether it's happening behind the trees, in the oceans, Member for, member for Kwanzaa, you know, you, you, I know you have uh, interest, a lot of interest in uh, agriculture, but... Uh, yeah. um, Mr. Speaker, I think uh, what I would suggest we do, I, this is a very serious case. And the way uh, Honorable Bokako has, has mentioned, it's very serious. So I think what you can do, Mr. Speaker, we have a committee clerk of the Committee of Agriculture and I see here. So I think the, the House, uh, you can direct that the, the committee clerk move fast because in the absence of the chairman and the vice chairman, the clerks are there. If they can now move fast, because this is an emergency. And I can see at the, if it is happening in Machakos, it's happening in Central. And I've also had cases this afternoon that is also happening in, in Western Kenya. So I suggest that we take uh, immediate uh, step to call the clerk of the committee to move fast with the ministry so that you can be able to get some money. Okay, uh, okay, be okay. because you are wrong. Yes. We don't operate that way as parliament. Those clerks of committees uh, give information to the clerk of the National Assembly. The letters cannot be read, signed by every Everybody who has just joined the public, Parliamentary Service Commission and start writing letters all over the country. So, so you see, and you see, Honorable Wanyonyi, I've always encouraged you to know where your, your, your fellow, your colleagues come from. The member for, the Honorable Rachel Nyamai is member for Kitui South, not Machakos. 
I'm sure, I'm sure she knows you are the member for Kwanzaa in Transoya County. So, but you know, it's, it's good to know that it's good that we know we know where everybody comes from. Anyhow, Honorable Wanyonyi, your point is not in the clerk. The deputy clerk is here and has handed the matter. She is going to write immediately to the relevant ministry. That's not, that's not, that can we deal with something else? Not, not, now, now, not, not about foot and mouth now. Honorable Chachu, your intervention is about foot and mouth. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I really wanted to make a statement on this because, Mr. Speaker, this is an emergency. It's about the life and death of our livestock. Mr. Yes. Speaker, sir, and it's happening all over the country, just not in the central part of Kenya. Mr. Speaker, this house has power, do have powers. Mr. Speaker, could you command that even though we have been on recess for a couple of days, that committee effectively takes charge and something is done so that by the time we are back from recess, there's a report that can be given to this house to allay the fears of Kenyans that our livestock might, might perish. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. That's exactly what we did. Honorable Wandai. The speaker had wanted to weigh in on this matter. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, it must be understood clearly that the matter that has been raised by Honorable Kago is not a laughing matter. Mr. Speaker, foot and mouth disease is a highly contagious viral disease for, for, for livestock. It's not, not just for cows or cattle, for sheep, goats, what have you. And it has got no boundary. It can be, it can spread like bushfire. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, even that, as we, that is contained in this statement. The, therefore, even as we, even as we contemplate taking the action we are contemplating taking, it's important to also understand where the national government and the county governments come in. Because, Mr. Speaker, this cannot be left to the county, a county of Kitui, for instance, or the county of Kiambu, where Ms. Honore Bukau comes from. It's a serious uh, matter of national importance that needs to be addressed very, very seriously by the ministry concerned. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, members, I think uh, member for Kimilili also wants to say how contagious it is. Yes, Mr. Speaker, thank you. This is a very important matter, and uh, this house cannot be held at ransom because the chair or the vice chair is not there. I think, Honorable Speaker, you need to issue the direction. Wherever they are, they should be communicated to. We need to take action so that we arrest this situation, Honorable Speaker, before it's out of hand. It doesn't matter whether the chair is available or not. He will get the communication from the chair, and we will move forward. I thank you. They will get communication from the clerk of the National Assembly, not from the chair. Chairs don't write letters. You see, this is why I, I've always uh, encouraged members to, to, to look at their standing orders most, more regularly. You do not. Now, the member for Mosop, who, who seems to suggest that there is, uh, there is some voodoo medicine. <laughs> member for Mosop. Mr. Speaker, while I appreciate the concerns expressed by, by, by my colleagues, it is true the virus, or actually the, 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 the vaccine, is not within, but to us, about one month ago, it affected our animals in our area. But we also have the African way of dealing with it. Nikupea ngombe busa. Yeah, that is the best way. Nakupeleka ngombe kwa mutoni asubui. That is the best way, Mr. Speaker. And that is how we treated ours. I'm talking from the experience, that is the best way, and they are alive. So, so now, you see, you see now, I think the Honorable Kevin Wanyonyi then who should have dealt with that matter very easily because um, what you mentioned is, I know, is very, is very uh, ready available. Point of order. Member Voyata. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm just concerned because uh, we have the leader of uh, government business and he's sitting pretty. Even if the chair for agriculture is not here, surely the government is here, Mr. Speaker. So. That disease, Mr. Speaker, I try to talk to my county vet officer. The drugs are not available. You can buy them even from uh, vet uh, agrovets. And the government leader of government majority is just sitting pretty, Mr. Speaker. Surely, we would have had a statement 
from the leader of government business here, Mr. Speaker. Majority, Mr. Speaker. Government majority. You see, you see the statement was, uh, the request was made just now. Uh, and we have given directions that, uh, that the clerk do right to the ministry concerned. So that uh, uh, the, 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 report, the reply will be awaited. They will be instructed that we need the response in the shortest period possible. If the owner of Kago had actually come by way of a question by private notice, uh, but we can't, the traditional liquor is, is being proposed as a, a cure. No, you see, this is what I keep telling you, honor members. A request for a statement, now you have turned it into a debate. But it, it, those, those who want to give uh, traditional liquor uh, will, will do it, but uh, let's, let's go to the next order. Order number eight, the Division of Revenue Bill, National Assembly Bill number seven of 2021, second reading. The Chairman, uh, Budget and Appropriations Committee. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker. I beg to move that uh, the Division of Revenue Bill, National Assembly Bill number seven of 2021 be read a second time. Honorable Speaker, the bill seeks to provide for the sharing of revenue raised nationally between the national government and the county government for the financial year 2021-2022 in accordance with Article 202, 203, 204, uh, 205, sorry, 2020, uh, 218 of the Constitution. Honorable Speaker, the enactment of the Division of Revenue Bill 2021 is critical in paving way for the introduction of the County Allocation of Revenue Bill 2021, which will provide for the sharing of uh, revenue raised nationally among county governments and thus forming the basis of the preparation of the annual budget estimate for the 47 county governments. Honorable Speaker, at this juncture, I wish to highlight the provisions under the Division of Revenue Bill 2021 are in line with the House resolution on the budget policy statement and the debt management strategy for the 2021-22 and the medium term. Honorable Speaker, this is in accordance with the provisions of Starting Order 232-8A. Honorable Speaker, I just want to give a general overview of uh, the division of uh, this um, division of revenue bill 2021. Honorable Speaker, the remedy you shared is calculated on the basis of the most recent audited uh, accounts of revenue received as approved by the National Assembly and is distributed equitably between the two levels of government, thus then shared among counties based on the third uh, basis formula for sharing revenue approved by Parliament under Article 217 of the Constitution. The projected revenue collection for the financial year 2021-2022 is estimated at Kenya shilling 1.77562 trillion shillings. The amount is shared between the national government, county government, and the equalization fund as follows. One, the national government at Kenya shilling, 1.398 trillion shillings. The county government at Kenya shilling, 370 billion shillings. And three, the equalization fund at 6.8 billion shillings. The allocations, of course, Mr. Speaker, now to the county government. The Division of Revenue 2021, sorry, the Division of Revenue Bill 2021 seeks to allocate Kenya shilling, 409.8 billion shillings to county governments for the financial year 2021-2022 based on the last audited and approved revenue for the financial year 2016-2017 worth Kenya shilling 1.358 trillion shillings. This, Mr. Speaker, represents a Kenya shilling 38.3 billion shilling or 10% increment in resource allocation to the county and is broken down as follows. One, the equitable share, 
worth 370 billion shillings. And the equitable share of revenue takes into account the fiscal framework, Mr. Speaker, set out in the BPS, which of course was approved by this parliament. This is further shared among counties based on the third formula for sharing uh, revenue approved by parliament under, section, under Article 217 of the Constitution. Mr. Speaker, too, we have the conditional allocation of grants amounting to 7.5 billion shillings. And the allocations are as follows. One, the 7.2 billion shillings for leasing of medical equipment, which of course uh, is a grant that was initiated in 2015, 2016 financial year. The second one is on is a 332 million shillings to supplement county allocations for construction of um, county headquarters. That is in Isiolo, Lamu, Nyandarwa, uh, Tana Liva, Tarakanidi, which at the inception didn't have uh, uh, county headquarters. Mr. Speaker, the third one is additional conditional grants from proceeds of loans and grants by the de development partners amounting to 32 uh, point, uh, 0.2 billion shillings. And it is spread across 12 uh, agencies. Mr. Speaker, as per attached with, um, with the statement that I have already tabled, I will not go through them, but one thing is clear, the, these are grants to assist in um, urban development, in rural development, and in all parts of uh, this country. Honorable Speaker, in line with Article 202, the Constitution of the Constitution, the national government has been allocating additional conditional allocations to the county governments from the national government share of revenue raised nationally. However, and I would really want members to note this, However, in the financial year 2021-2022, there seems to be a policy shift from a past, uh, past practice. Honorable Speaker, in a meeting called IBEC, that is Intergovernmental Budget and Economic Council, shared by the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, together, of course, with the, uh, with the membership of all uh, governors and uh, CECs in, in charge of finance, they agreed on the following. The Division of Revenue Bill 2021 seeks to convert to equitable share status most of the previously allocated conditional grants from national government equitable share worth 17.02 billion shillings. These include one, the allocation from fuel levy fund worth 9.4 billion shillings or 15% of the roads uh, maintenance uh, fuel levy meant for maintenance of county roads as published by the Kenya Roads Board Act 20, uh, 1999. The conversion should, however, be undertaken in line with con uh, provisions of Article 206 of the Constitution and uh, defined as revenue. Honorable Speaker, the second one is compensation for user fees for gone, that is 900 million shillings, to pay compensate public dispensaries and health centers for lost revenue or abolishment of user fees. This, Mr. Speaker, was meant to cushion and ensure sustainable government policy of not charging user fees in public health facilities. This now has now been converted to equal shareable revenue. The third one, Mr. Speaker, is on the level five hospitals. The Kenya shilling, 4.3 billion shillings, and it was going to five level five hospitals, Honorable Speaker. In the wisdom of that summit, they decided that uh, the other counties have become of age and they have also their own level five um, hospitals and they decided now it will be a shareable revenue across the entire country. However, however, Mr. Speaker, I think it's a high time that these regional blocks, if they feel or they deem it fit, to make sure that they also come together. If they feel that there is a, a hospital, for example, where I come from in Nyeri, if they feel that they have patients coming from outside the Nyeri County, it is now the responsibility of the economic block to sit down, agree on what they can be able to do to support or supplement what the Nyeri uh, County government will be giving to the Nyeri uh, Provincial Hospital. And they are all over the country, Mr. Speaker. The fourth one, is the rehabilitation of the youth polytechnic, polytechnics at two billion shillings. It was actually introduced in the financial year 2017-2018, aimed to enhance 
access to quality and relevant skills training to youth across the counties. Finally, Honorable Speaker, we want to note and uh, maybe remind the Senate that the issue of accountability has not been forthcoming, and especially from the county level. In fact, Mr. Speaker, it's a challenge that we are throwing to the, to the senators. Instead of the many instances that we have seen, them interrogating parastatos and other agencies, national government agencies, it's a high time now we see the county government, the, the senators interrogating county funds, and also, and especially mostly, even the donor-funded um, uh, projects. Honorable Speaker, there is also some tendency of some county governments relying so much on these uh, donor-funded uh, project, project, projects, Mr. Speaker. And some of them are, have dried up. They are like, like the KUSAP, the Kenya Urban Support Program. The taps have ran dry. And of course, it was doing roads. It was doing um, health. Uh, it was doing quite a number of uh, projects in urban areas. But the taps have dried. So it's a high time that the county government should also try as much as possible, raise their own revenue as opposed to relying on the donor funding. Finally, Mr. Speaker, the bill introduces also four new additional conditional allocations from proceeds uh, from development partners. And these are the following. The following. One, the emergency locust uh, response project, which there is an allocation of 800 million shillings, is being financed by the World Bank. And it, is, of course, is in response to the threat to livelihood uh, by the desert locust. Of course, this is a seasonal uh, project, uh, Mr. Speaker, until, of course, the locusts are eradicated. The second one is on the UNFPA, that's the ninth country program implementation. That is about 73 uh, million shillings intended to address, to address the national priorities under the third uh, Kenya medium, uh, medium plan which is also under the big four. The third one is the Kenya Informal Settlement uh, Improvement Project. Kenya shilling, 2.8 billion shillings, funded by the World Bank. The fourth one is a speaker, is a primary health care in devolved context at a cost of uh, 701 million shillings, a grant from the Danish International Development Program. Finally, Mr. Speaker, the international... Uh, the IDA, Kenya Devolution Support Program, level four grant, was 4.6 billion shillings. And Mr. Speaker, it's good, it's important to underscore this grant, because this grant is based on um, the physical prudence of which counties. The counties that uh, have uh, better physical prudence uh, get this fund. And it is actually good because it is encouraging counties to also compete among themselves. Honorable Speaker, the committee made a few observations, which I'm going to highlight a few of them. The first one, Honorable Speaker, that the conversion of the allocation to county government from the fuel levy, 15% of Kenya shilling, 9.4 billion shillings, to us is also a contravention of the statute establishing the fund and whose intention was to reinvent the critical financing for roads establishment or maintenance by both national and county government. However, Mr. Speaker, the counties also have become of age. The county chiefs are also now responsible enough that we don't even have to tell them that this money is for a particular project. They also have to be responsible. That if funds are sent to them for roads, that money should purely go for roads. But it is in their discretion now. If they feel that their priority is paying salaries, some, they are, of course, there are, are those who are going to do that, but they should know that there is also a cap on uh, how much they should spend on salaries. It is calling for physical prudence. Mr. Speaker, we also have a concern that is, if there is inability to oversight use of uh, the conditional grants allocated to counties. And conversion, Mr. Speaker, of the conditional grants to equitable share will not address this problem. Mr. Speaker, we have had in the past, including uh, the county where the former majority leader comes from, whereby there was a big issue on uh, some conditional grants being diverted to do other things. Mr. Speaker, it's a huge issue, and we also want to, to tell and ask the, the, the senators that they should focus on their legislative, not, not just legislative work, but their oversight role. Mr. Speaker, we have, I, have, I haven't seen 
the serious senators working and especially on, on uh, these conditional grants and actually interrogating. We want to see them more in the, in the counties. Mr. Speaker, I'm hoping and looking forward that the seats reserved you know, for, senate, for senators in the county assemblies, and especially when they are doing their budgets, we want to see them occupied by the senators. Mr. Speaker, it is also important to note that um, there has been an ongoing uh, practice by county governments of utilizing conditional grants for purpose other than uh, that stipulated under the law, which is, of course, in total disregard of the Division of Revenue Act and the County Allocation of Revenue Act and should be investigated. Honorable Speaker, conversion of the health-related conditional grants to equitable share without prior tabling of the report also indicate the extent of development of county related indicating the sorry indicating the extent of the development of county related health institutions could lead to health burden or burden to affected county governments during a pandemic period and affect the service delivery honorable speaker given the revenue shared sorry given the revenue shared our projections mr speaker it creates a physical risk that could necessarily necessitate borrowing, which the national government budget implementation project, uh, process will be negatively uh, affected. Ideally, any revenue shortfall should be shared equitably between the national and county governments. Mr. Speaker, as I conclude now, Mr. Speaker, we made these recommendations. Having considered the above matters, the committee recommends that this House approves the Division of Revenue Bill 2021 specified as follows. One, the national government equitable share worth Kenya shilling 1.398 trillion. Two, the county government equitable share worth 370 billion. Three, the equalization fund worth 6.8 billion shillings. The government of Kenya conditional allocation worth 7.5 billion shillings and additional conditional allocation from proceeds of loans and grants by development partner worth Kenya shilling 32.34 billion shillings. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, the committee recommends to this House that the Division of, the Reven the Division of Revenue Bill 2021 be read a second time. Honorable Speaker, with those very many and few remarks, I want to request the leader of the minority party to second. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Bandi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in uh, complying, in trying to comply with Article 217 and 218 of the Constitution, and the people of Kenya decided to create those articles to help uh, divide revenue between the two levels of government, the national and the county governments. Mr. Speaker, in the year 2021 2022, as the chair of the committee who has moved the motion has just ably put it, the government is projecting to collect upwards of 1 trillion 775 billion shillings. Madam Mr. Speaker, out of this, uh, 370 will go to counties as shareable revenue, and of course 6.8 is going to equalization fund. The first question one would want to ask is every year we vote for equalization fund, Mr. Speaker, but it has never been actualized. And so this committee is also calling upon the Treasury CS, who is responsible for the administration and management of this fund, to make sure that those issues that have not been resolved around the equalization fund still was not there, we would have to the end of or the to the end of the life of this fund, so something needs to be done. Mr. Speaker, the share of revenue that goes to national government is 1.3, 1 trillion, 358 billion. Mr. Speaker, looking at the share of revenue that is going to counties, one would uh, compared to the constitutional provision of the last audited and approved revenue, revenue based on the last audited and approved accounts, which is the year ending 2016, is 27%. But then, Mr. Speaker, that is why I think uh, BBI has come in handy, 
because we keep on referring to historical figures, the historical data of 2015-2016, when we already have audited accounts for 2018-2019, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, something else that needs to be mentioned is that, yes, the Chair has actually alluded to it, that we have the executive as in agreement with the county governments to convert and commute funds that were originally or in the previous years treated as conditional grants to shareable revenue. And I think this is in realization that the government cannot collect enough revenue to meet the enhanced revenue request. But Mr. Speaker, the question then therefore begs which needs to be addressed is when you convert the road maintenance levy of 9.4 billion, which is the 15% of the levy, going to counties, and this money has been religiously going to counties, when you convert it to shareable revenue, you are giving counties a blank check to use it as they so wish. And therefore, the net effect is that our roads may have a challenge in being maintained. How sure are we that county governments are going to be responsible enough that the county assemblies in conjunction with the county executive are going to do their budget uh, smart, in, in, in a smart way to ensure that this money actually goes towards the maintenance of our roads? And again, there is a law in place which regulates the usage of this fund. This was a fund that was specifically created to maintain roads. Now, when you make it a shareable revenue, you run the risk of having money spent outside the legal statutes. And uh, Mr. Speaker, that is a concern that needs to be addressed. Mr. Speaker, something else that I think we need to talk about is the projection of revenue. Mr. Speaker, the government is projecting to collect 1.7756 trillion. How realistic is that? That is a question that the Budget and Appropriations Committee is concerned about, chances are that we are not likely to collect beyond 1.5 trillion this financial year. Then that, what that means is that there will be a shortfall of over 200 billion shillings. And then that will be shouldered by the national government, which is remaining with, uh, with 1.39 trillion. If you take into consideration the possible revenue shortfall, then you are going to collect uh, not more than 1.1 trillion. That is the amount that we are going to spend in paying the loans and paying the interest on loans and meeting all consolidated fund services requests, which, Mr. Speaker, we all know is not cheap now. And again, we are going to pay salaries. By the end of the day, Mr. Speaker, chances are very high, and I've always said it, that you, we will end up borrowing money to meet recurrent expenditure. And Mr. Speaker, that is not very good for this country. This is something we have talked about and we must repeat. There is need to have funds, to, there's need for the executive, and more particularly the treasury, which has been tasked with the responsibility of managing our economy to ensure that economic growth is stimulated. And this you can only do by focusing a lot more on the most critical sectors of our economy. The SMEs has been talked about, but we also need to stimulate demand. We need to have money put into economic stimulus projects, money that would go to people who would spend it. If you want to stimulate economic growth, take money to those who want the money to spend, not people who will receive money and keep it. So we need to take money to the grassroots. That is why I support the initiative of putting money to those projects that go to the rural areas. And that is why I don't understand why the Treasury has a problem with the National Government's Constituency Development Fund. In fact, we should have more stimulus packages going directly to the grassroots to stimulate growth. If counties were utilizing the resources effectively, we would have a more uh, invigorated uh, economic activities in the villages, and this would have helped us realize more revenue. But we know what is happening in, in our counties, and I think something needs to be done 
in terms of, of, of holding the county managers to account. Mr. Speaker, something that I want to also talk about is with regards to the government's uh, borrowing strategy. Mr. Speaker, I'm sure this House is aware of reports that have come out of the media that Kenya government is planning to borrow more euro, more euro bonds or to get euro bond loans, that they are going to commercial uh, market to borrow money. I want to say this as a member of the Budget and Appropriations Committee, that if that is the case, if that is not a true story, then it would be unfortunate because the information we have, and which is on record from the Treasury, is that they are not likely to borrow commercial loans. That that is not in the plan. That the country, our country, is planning to borrow money from the World Bank, IMF, African Development Bank, and those other concessionary loans. There is a plan to borrow 78 billion from IMF at zero interest rates and with a very considered or considerate uh, terms of repayment going for 30 years. We have World Bank to loan this country 85 billion. These are the information provided by the CS. 85 billion at 1.4 percentage interest rates. There is African Development Bank which is likely to give this country 22 billion shillings and many others. So Mr. Speaker, if it is true that the government is planning to borrow money through Eurobond, then they are concealing information from us, which would be very uh, interesting. I don't expect the executive to conceal information from the Budget and Appropriations Committee. And I think when we next meet the CS Treasury, which is, which is possibly next week, I am sure the committee will take him to task about this report. And I just pray that the report is fake news. Because, Mr. Speaker, how can a CS Treasury come before the Budget and Appropriations Committee and give wrong information about borrowing strategy? Mr. Speaker, I want to again repeat here as I conclude that much as we want to agree with this division of revenue, and I support it fully, we need to have more money to the grassroots. But something that needs to be repeated and repeated a thousand times for those who are responsible to listen is the counties, the mismanagement of resources in this country is causing the country big time. I know there is also mismanagement at the national level. We are seeing what is happening with uh, KEMSA. I want to repeat it again. Whereas someone, a lady, you look at that lady and you really wonder whether that lady can even move close to where a contract of seven billion is being discussed. And the lady has no knowledge of even the bank accounts for the, the company. But I don't want to go there, Mr. Speaker. If we want to move forward as a country, corruption must be condemned at whatever level. But the corruption at the counties is costing this country also big time. Because the money that is going to counties could help this country come out of the economic mess we are in. Because the moment you put money at the grassroots, Mr. Speaker, and have our young people who are very energetic. Mr. Speaker, Kenya is number 48 in the world out of 193 countries recognized by UN in terms of population. But we are number 29 in terms of percentage of youthful population. That tells you clearly how exposed this country is. If we engage the youth effectively and put money in their hands, these are people who will definitely have increased expenditure because they need the money to spend. They are not people who would even keep the money. They will spend it whether they are spending on the Bosa, Changa, but the money will circulate in the economy. The net effect of that is economic growth. But you see, when you have a few individuals in the counties misappropriating the resources, putting up hotels which have no people even to sleep in, because even COVID does not allow us to sleep in those hotels. So the hotels become huge white elephant projects everywhere. People have huge houses which they don't even need in the villages. They put up huge houses out of public resources. 
money that is supposed to help our youth come out of poverty. Mr. Speaker, this is a crime that I think is even bad in the eyes of God. And I want to ask those people who are managing our resources at that level, please change your habit. But those who are responsible for oversighting, we have personally, I think, and many of my colleagues, we have given up on the county assemblies. Because what you see happening in those county assemblies don't inspire any confidence. But the Senate needs to come in and fill in the gap where county assemblies should have been the ones taking the lead. I see attention shifted almost entirely to the Senate. But the truth of the matter is that the people who have the, let me say, the, 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 the advantage to continuously and on a daily basis monitor what is going on in the counties is the members of the, our county assemblies. So, Mr. Speaker, members of our county assemblies going forward, please take your responsibilities very seriously. And if Kenyans have been electing people without capacity, it is high time that we thought about the people we vote to become members of county assembly. We don't need these people who are uh, bag carriers, flower girls. We need serious people to be in those county assemblies. Even the nomination, I've said it before. There's a time I said it and I almost faced a riot and, de and demonstration from um, incited ladies that I, I said that they have not gone to school. What I'm saying is we need basic education for these people, whether you are nominated or elected. I know even National Assembly here, we, have, we don't have that minimum academic qualification. It should be there. Those of us who have not got basic degree, please, you have one, a few more months. Get it so that 2022, we have people who can oversight. You cannot have a standard eight dropout and because you are too popular in your place, oversighting a professor. That is why a professor will come to you and look at you and feel that you are wasting his time and address you with a condescending attitude because you have no capacity to oversight. So I just want to plead with those of us who still want to represent people that if you don't have that minimum qualification, I don't think this house will be willing to extend it further. We extended it to 2022 and I think we should be reluctant this time uh, to extend that academic minimum academic qualification requirement. Mr. Speaker, with those remarks, I want to second and I support the Division of Revenue. Well, I think the Honorable John Brandy touched a row enough, <laughs> which, is, which I think, uh, as you know, Honorable John Brandy's book, apart from appearing in the Constitution, is also anchored in the Section 22 of the Elections Act. Anyhow, I propose the question, which is that the Division of Revenue Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 7 of 2021, be now read a second time. Honorable Duale. No? Is it? No. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, the Division of Revenue Bill proposes uh, 370 billion as the equitable share. And that translates to about 27.3% of the 2016-2017 audited and approved by the National Assembly accounts. Uh, and that time, the audited accounts was 1.357 trillion. So speaking cumulatively, the county governments are getting 409 billion. And uh, they comprise of the following. The equitable share of 370 billion, the conditional location from the share national government revenue of about 7.53 billion, and the conditional allocation from proceeds of loans and grants by development partners of about 32 billion. That gives the county government 409 billion. But Mr. Speaker, that is what they are getting. But there are a number of silent, salient issues in this Division of Revenue Bill, 
and in overall county financial management. To start with, Mr. Speaker, there is no substantial increase to counties. And I say this without fear of contradiction. What this bill has just done is to convert the four existing conditional grants to counties into unconditional grants by allocating the, to the uh, res respective amounts total into about 17.4 billion in this current financial year. Which ones are these, Mr. Speaker? This is the road maintenance levy. This is the level five hospital. This is the compensation for the user fees uh, foregone. And this is the money that is supposed to go to rehabilitate the, the village polytechnics. So if you look at that, there is no substantial increase that has been given to counties. And also because the bill has just converted conditional grants into. What is the side effect? What is the implication of, of doing that? The speaker, the implication of doing that is just to make sure, and it's going to affect counties, that a number of projects will remain incomplete and they will stall. The second salient and important point, Mr. Speaker, I need to raise is there is lack of criteria for conditional allocation to counties. And this house has been passing the division of revenue. This is the eighth year. But there is no particular criteria on how the, uh, the, the, the allocation, the conditional allocations to counties is done. For example, if you look at the division of revenue uh, bill 2020, it proposes to allocate roughly about 7.2 billion for the leasing of equipment and another 32 billion, another 3.2 billion, no, 332 million for the construction of headquarters in Isiolo, in uh, Tana River, in Taraka Nifi, in Nyandarwa, and in Lamu. So speaker, it is very sad and very strange that there is no policy criteria in identifying these counties. And what, does, what happens? If this continue, then there will be serious marginalization of some counties. So this person who is saying Isiolo, Isiolo must be funded to build its own county headquarters. Yandarwa must be funded. Uh, Thika Tanariva must be funded. Lamo must be funded. What criteria are you using? Why are you denying? No, why, why not fund uh, Kiembu? Why not fund Garissa? Why not fund Marsabit? So absolutely there is no policy criteria. And this must be. And I think the budget committee, the budget committee has been the budget committee has been giving, Mr. Speaker. The Speaker, I don't know why people are saying budget. I have just read the report, and the budget committee. Well, there's another point of order from Honorable Judge Uganya. Mr. Speaker, I want to tell um, the former majority leader that Marcel County, with every leadership of Korea Tani, one of the governor, built the county government offices and the county assembly. We don't need that fund. <laughs> that appears like a point of information. Honorable Mr. Speaker, Mr. Mr. Speaker. The speaker, he just wants to, uh, the member wants okay. just to tell Honorable, us that. Honorable Kioni, what is your? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to let uh, the former leader of majority to know that uh, the county headquarters for Nyandaro was taken by Laikipia. And he is totally out of order to misread the house of the nation. That there was no policy. The policy was that Nyandarwa having lost his county headquarters to Laikipia, and any county that did not have a county headquarters done by the former national government required to have been provided with a, head, a county headquarters. And this has been in the budget for the last eight years. I don't know why he's complaining about it now. The speaker, you know, I don't want to go into village politics. If you have, a, if your headquarters has been built, the I just wants, only use the chair budget ones who maybe perhaps. I just only use that. Raise the issue. The, 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 the number two is raising the point of uh, policy. Yes. Yeah. Yes, uh, Honorable Kadiri. Honorable uh, Speaker, thank you for this opportunity. I want to clarify because Honorable Speaker, the former majority leader said that there is no criteria, but I want to to clearly state, even in our statement, that you have said that. The ones who have been identified are the ones who did not inherit adequate facilities from the defunct local authorities. 
So it's specifically for the ones who did not inherit five of them. Five of them. And that is, so there is a criteria, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, if you listen to all my colleagues, what I am saying is eight years down the line after the implementation of devolved system of government, there must be a criteria and a policy to identify which county requires extra resources, whether there was whether uh, the, the previous defunct county uh, councils did not live on infrastructure, whether you have built it. If you have built an honorable church, I think you, what you wanted to do was that you have a county headquarters. I was just giving an example. I'm saying only that. But Mr. Speaker, I still stand that there is no criteria policy. But Mr. Speaker, let me go because I'm losing my time. The next item, Mr. Speaker, and I have an issue with, is this animal called the leasing of medical equipment? Mr. Speaker, there must be a justification that this significant increase, if you look at this year, Mr. Speaker, previously in the last financial year, this uh, amount was at 6.2 billion in the financial year 2020-2021. But if you look at uh, what has been allocated in 2021-2022, the speaker, is 7.2. There's an increase in 1 billion plus. The speaker, there must be a justification. You remember the mystery behind the leasing of equipment. In some of our counties, those equipment are not even working. And those equipment are not there. The personnel is not there. And we really ask even the, the committee of this house, to do an audit. I mean, the Senate has failed. They had a report. But it must have an audit. And this is still, we are seven years down the line. Mr. Speaker, if you may ask me, this is a criminal enterprise shrouded in a, an opaque uh, pre procurement uh, 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 process. The project is associated, Mr. Speaker, with high operational cost on consumable, on reagents, you know, if you look at the reagents and inadequate and fluctuating electricity challenges, if you go to the far flank counties like Isiolo, Marsabet, Garissa, these equipments are not working, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there's also increasing high level of pending bills and increasingly high expenditure on personal emolument. Mr. Speaker, the PFM Act is very, very clear. And let me start with the expenditure on personal, on salaries. Counties continue to spend a significant share of their allocation on personal emolument, contrary to the PFM Act, Mr. Speaker. Regulation 25.1b of the PFM, County Government Regulations 2015, sets at, I think, 35% of the county's total expenditure, Mr. Speaker. Today, and uh, quoting a report from the Controller of Budget, they are at 44.8%. The Speaker, the controller of budget, is supposed to crack the whip. She is not doing it. She is bringing a report to this House saying counties are spending 44.2% on salaries. The Speaker, the essence of devolution was to bring service to our people, health, water, education, roads. The Speaker, this high level. Okay, don't, 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 don't make the case. I'll give you the two, your two minutes. I'll give you extra two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, this, this spending bills affect our economy. And, Mr. Speaker, there's high corruption. Governors are asking for close to 20% to be paid in advance for them to pay pending bills, particularly for the pending bills of, the previous predece uh, of their predecessors. Mr. Speaker, my submission as I support this bill, I have the following submissions to make. To achieve even the BPI proposal of at least 35% nationally, uh, raising the, the amount to counties, Mr. Speaker, functions must be democide. There are functions that are ought to be in the counties, mainly in the agriculture and health sector, which still are with the national government. Speaker, even as we, as we give them 35%, we are not saying which functions are going to follow. We must first discuss the, the, the functions, then go to the, to, the, 
to the, uh, to the increment. The speaker, the national government should also guarantee counties who have utilized the, the medical equipment uh, facilities for the project duration of seven years, that these contracts must be relooked at. The speaker, the government must address the balloony wage, wage bill at the counties. The pending bills at the counties have led to deterioration of financial positions in our businesses, and that must be relooked at. And finally, Mr. Speaker, the CS National Treasury and Planning should bring into this House a policy framework to guide conditional allocation. I'm sitting next to the former chair of budget and the current chair of budget. We said it in subsequent years, the CS must bring a policy to guide conditional allocations, conditional grants to counties, money is being given to counties with no criteria, with no policy, donor funded some of them, Mr. Speaker, he has no, he has no, he has no, I mean, uh, that he has no powers to do that when it comes to loans and grants from development partners. And if he does this, this will reduce the use of conditional allocation as a tool to marginalize certain parts of this country. I support. Honorable uh, Kimunya. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I rise to support the Division of Revenue Bill and thank the committee. They've done a good job of a within a very short uh, period. And uh, as members will be aware, this uh, uh, bill is required, is a prerequisite, is one of the conditions precedent for the uh, formulation and tabling of the estimates. Uh, so we can't do anything until we have passed this law. And uh, uh, to the extent that it still has, because of some advice that was given, it still has to go to the Senate, I think uh, what I would like to urge members is, is a straightforward thing. We really don't even want to spend a lot of time on it if we just focus on the division. We discussed this when we were discussing the uh, budget policy statement. In fact, it was very clearly uh, stated as exactly that once we passed the BPS, the natural progression is the DORB. And it follows in exactly the same figures that we, we passed. So, Perhaps we, we, we could save ourselves a lot of time as a house uh, by limiting to just a few comments, if any, because it's not the kind of thing we even change. And then uh, Senate will then endorse so that we can go to the county allocation of revenue bill, which is what my predecessor I was talking about in terms of, you know, apportioning how much will go to recurrent, how much goes to expenditure. But in the division of revenue bill, we are just doing the vertical uh, division between how much remains in the national and how much goes to the counties. And, and it's not true to say uh, that uh, the amount indicated here has not increased over last year. I believe last year we appropriated in total about 370 billion, including the conditional grant. Now this year, it's clearly put on the schedule for those who have cared to read that we are actually appropriating uh, 409 uh, million, uh, billion, which is uh, uh, an extra 30 billion going to the counties over and above what they received last year. So it's, there's actually an increase even after condensing uh, or reformulating the composition of the monies because it, it really didn't make sense and I think this was part of the discussion we had in the pre-budget uh, meeting. It did not make sense to have money for recurrent expenditure for roads. Uh, being given as conditional grants, yet roads, the some roads are actually devolved. Uh, so you, you devolving, you're giving some money uh, as part of the shareable revenue, then on, to, on top of that, you're giving them uh, others as conditional grants to care, and yet it's the same money to be used across the same roads. So it's, it's important that uh, we, 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 we get the counties to budget for their totality of their money, except the, for the uh, programs that are funded separately through development grants uh, and, and anything else that the national government will do, which is not on a recurrent nature. Roads will forever be maintained by the counties. So it, it's something that was foreseen and was included in the schedule among the 14 that were devolved, uh, which is very different from, for example, the medical equipment scheme, which is a temporary uh, measure. Uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, you know, I was, I was actually surprised to hear 
uh, my predecessor talk about the construction of the county headquarters as if it is a preferential uh, grant uh, to some counties uh, to the exclusion of others. And indeed, uh, members may remember at the passage of the 2010 constitution, and uh, you know, we had a transitional authority that was set up by this house that went around the entire 47 counties to establish their state of readiness to uh, operate as devolved units. And one of the things they do is look at, do they have facilities? Do they have headquarters? And those that were identified as not having headquarters were five, including Nyandaro. And uh, as the construction started, challenges came in terms of the, f the slow disbursement of funds, uh, issues with contractors, and even as we speak, the Nyandaro County headquarters is still on a, almost on a temporary uh, basis, eight years into devolution. Uh, it's actually, it was only resuscitated, I think, last year, the construction because of issues with contractors and all that, following also the, the, the slow disbursement. So it, it's important that people put some of these things into context because we might be giving, misleading the public and giving the impression that this budget is, is sending funds to specific areas uh, to the exclusion uh, of all the others. And even all the other donor funded projects they are itemized here properly, why they are happening, where they are happening. Uh, and uh, it, again, uh, it's not the last to happen. More will happen into the future. And I will speak, uh, I think the more, if you look at the, these figures here, we are talking of about 30.2 uh, billion uh, percent of, uh, in, you know, being given to the, to the counties. Uh, when you now compare uh, with, in, in terms of, uh, as a percentage of 2016, 2017, and without even getting into the debate that we'll be getting on after the 23rd, when we're discussing the, the BBI report, one, one can now see, yes, the Constitution requires 15%, but uh, uh, His Excellency the President, in his own uh, wisdom and in his own magnanimity, has decided to extend double that amount to the counties because he believes in devolution. But there will come a time when there are some people who don't believe in devolution, and they could stick to 15%. Now, if you divided this amount and gave to the counties, because everyone is saying, yes, please, we need more money. If we wanted to give 15%, we'd actually be giving counties 200 billion, right? There is still 370, they're still crying for money. We're giving about 200 billion, which is hardly enough to execute the 14 functions that were anticipated they'll be doing when the 15% was put in the Constitution in 2010. And hence, the wisdom of locking in uh, this kind of the, 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 the discretionary giving of money to counties by the president to lock it in into the constitution as a revision to the constitution because the reality has shown that 15% is not enough. It's 200 billion. 15% is not enough. But by moving it to 35%, then the counties can have the predictability. They will have, the, the, as they do their county integrated development plans, they will be knowing that, yes, we are working on a certain figure, not less than 400 billion yeah, into the future, and be able to even secure uh, their, their long-term planning you know, in terms of what roads to do, where to put water, where to, uh, to what schools, what to do with the, with the nursery school, the polytechnics, and all those things that we expect them to do, including uh, taking care of the youth and the, the training facilities and the, the trade industrialization issues that they need to do at that level to spur development that will then uh, kind of create uh, some momentum towards the, the bigger generation of the wider uh, GDP. So, Honorable Speaker, this is, this is the real, a straightforward figure, a uh, straightforward thing. We really don't need to, to spend a lot of time on it. And I would urge that we pass it with minimal uh, uh, time uh, so that we can be able to, to get into other uh, issues that we also need to, to debate as a house, especially given the limited time we have uh, in, in sitting. Honorable Speaker, I know members have been raising the issue of, 
of, uh, of uh, CDF and delays. Uh, and we are all, con you know, concerned that uh, uh, the, the flow of funding has not been in tandem with the expectation of members and the commitments that members have at the grassroots. I have personally been uh, engaging with the Treasury, including this morning, and I can report that there is some agreed framework now in terms of the release of money uh, between now and April uh, on a release of two billion per week, which means by end of April, we will have released all the 41 billion for this financial year. And then the balance of the areas will have been released within May and June. We must accept the flow of funds into the treasury has also not been as good, uh, partly because of the COVID, other challenges that have affected revenue generation. But for this week, it's already been released uh, a two billion. Uh, so we have 28 billion that's already now with the board. No, that's, uh, I'm giving you information that is good for you. So we have- Honorable what's your point of order? Yeah, Mr. Speaker, you, yeah. you know, uh, the leader of majority, yes, is giving us information uh, that is critical, but he's touching on very important issues, very sensitive to this house, that uh, by rising on his place to give us that information does not help much. That is the kind of information we want in a written report so that uh, the CS uh, can be held to his undertaking. Uh, that if that uh, information is not acted upon in the way the leader of majority is saying, then we have a, a, a recourse as a house to uh, hold him uh, uh, responsible through implementation uh, of, uh, procedure. But by rising, kind of to respond to what uh, I, th I think that is no. what he's doing, no. to respond to what the member had said, no. and to quieten, so to speak, the, the, the mood of this house is, I think, is to take us out of, uh, uh, I, I think it is misleading. So, so, so whereas that information is good, if it cannot be reduced into a report that we can hold the CS accountable, I think you are just, what it's called, we are being softened. No. I, I, I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank, thank you. I, 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 I take, uh, I take Hello, the... Honorable, there's a member for Samburu North. Mr. Speaker, I, th I think I, I also have a concern on the issue. What is in the, in the public domain am among members what is, is that uh, 18 billion shillings, which is arrears for uh, CDF previous years, is eating into the, the money that is meant for CDF for this, this financial year. I think that needs also to be clarified. That money that was in arrears should not be part of the uh, part of the this financial what, years. What, 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 what is that now? What was out of order? It is, uh, the, the, the majority leader is trying to explain uh, the issue of CDF. And what, what is, is really disturbing us is the fact that no, no, the money... No, no, you know, you can be disturbed, but if there's nothing out of order, this you just, just sit quiet and then we get disturbed. You just yeah. continue to be disturbed, Honorable <laughs> Maga. Thank you. Honorable Speaker, I know the Honorable T.J. Kajuang is a seasoned member and knows whatever I'm saying is on hand side. Uh, so it's a part, part of the permanent record of this house. And the same discussion is actually taking place within the budget committee. And uh, it's part of the record of the budget committee because we must should say that that should be captured as part of the proceedings of the budget committee for follow-up. So I think, I think the... the, the just so that we don't get into a debate on CDF. I'm raising the issue of CDF within the framework, within the context of demonstrating what has happened with devolved funds. You know, we are talking of DORA here. The division of revenue is money we are taking to the counties. It's exactly in the same way that we are devolving another 2.5% to through CDF, again for operations at the constituency level. And, the, <clears throat> and we expect the same veracity and the same uh, uh, issue of oversight on the, on the two funds, but if there's a delay in getting money to the counties, which has been witnessed because of the challenges we are facing, if there's a delay in CDF, you now have witnessed what happened 
so that as part of our oversight into uh, on, on this money is, 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 is really getting the treasury to ensure that we have more money going to the counties, to our constituencies, within a timely manner, so that activities don't get jeopardized. And, and you will see the same thing happening when you go out there in the counties. Um, small and micro enterprises. We would have gotten contracts with the county governments, and some who have been funded by banks through the tender financing. If there's a mismatch between the flow of money, the uh, capital commitment they do, the contracting that they have done with the counties, and the repayments by the counties, they are not able to pay the banks. And hence, you're getting all these uh, issues surrounding there. So even as we pass this uh, Division of Revenue Bill, I think I, sitting from, as member of Kipipiri, I would also want to wish to see the, that the money actually flows uh, to, to the counties. The money flows to our constituencies so that activities can take place. Now, as majority leader, I also now, on behalf of all of you, uh, or at least the side that I lead, and uh, next time I should also carry uh, John Buddy with me, so that we can show, tell Treasury that we have 290 members out there who need their CDA funds flowing. But we have a commitment now, and I would wish to believe, and I think has been honored so far, I would hope that we can uh, honor it even more. Uh, and if they, uh, the, the situation improves, we will try to fast track the disbursement of that money. But at least we have. Yes, yeah, yeah, give him the, give him back some, the mic, give him the mic. No, thank you. I, I just wanted to, to, to say, it's something we'll continue doing and I'll not stop. I'm also affected so that we, we, we ensure that your funds flow. Nothing to do with passage of bills here, nothing about pass off training. We have commitments to the people that there's 41 billion that is supposed to go out there to implement primary schools, to do all those things that we are doing. And the, the, having the money in Nairobi does not help. Uh, the issues in Kibiperi, the issues in uh, Kisi, the issues in, uh, in, in, in all the, the various areas. So uh, I think that's my commitment to you. I would, I would be doing that as part of my service to you, uh, but not decide to stop softening you. Uh, and we also have our CDF committee, which will be doing it. And I know Dr. Pukose will be happier now that he can go on the recess next week and do something with a little money. But we also need to, uh, to put some pressure on our board. You know, it's one thing money moving to the treasury, from the treasury to the, the, the CDF board, and then from CDF board to the constituencies. So it's an integrated thing that we need to, to work on together. And I agree that we still have some challenges, but we work on it. With those few remarks, I beg to support. Member for Funula. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I also stand here to support the Division of Revenue Bill. Just, just a minute, there's a point of order. Honorable Kanyuria. Honorable Speaker, we are discussing a very important matter and we are not properly constituted. I don't think we have the numbers. Can you count? Where, 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 what are you, mom? Well, honor members, we are only 32. Can you ring the division bell? The Honorable Mutunga is not allowed by our standing orders, having drawn the speaker's attention to lack of quorum to leave. He's not, he's not allowed to leave the chamber. <laughs> and I want that, I want that uh, part of our standing orders uh, to be implemented at all, at all times. The member who draws the speaker's attention to lack of quorum cannot leave. Cannot leave. <laughs> and, and, and that report in the standing order is very deliberate. Now it is the Honorable Eseli and Honorable Wangwe, the other, the other whips, or the others have already taken leave.
पुतिन पंडित मैं पंडित वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन टेन इलेवन टेल
have um, extended the time for the bell, the official bell to ring, beyond the normal 10 minutes by another 10 minutes. You see, the budget committee has got 27 members. 27. If they were all here, you don't need another 23. And obviously, when we are dis discussing a matter of uh, finance, I would expect also members of the finance committee to be in here in their droves. Those are only two. So, is, is there any chance, those of you who are there, that uh, we could ever go beyond 42? Order members, order. Just, just take your seats. I think you have tried your level, level best. The whips have tried their level best. The budget committee in a, on a matter of this nature, I think, should be the one to take the lead. Any honor members? Time being 5.25 p.m. And uh, for lack of quorum, the House stands adjourned until today at 7 p.m.